Okay, what I have here is a specialized damper cartridge out of a 2015 Epic fork. Uh, and so what I was gonna do is go through and take this part just to show you what's inside of this today. I'm not gonna show you how to service the whole thing or, or how to do all of this, uh, but I just wanted to show you what's inside of here. Now I've already taken this apart and drained the oil out of this and taken the pressure out of it. So I'm just gonna disassemble this. Realize if, if you try to do this at home, obviously you're gonna have oil everywhere. So be careful with all that. Okay, so we've got the stem here, we've got the base cap, and there's a grub screw, a little rubber pellet. Uh, this is just a thin walled tube. Uh, this is what contains the brain unit itself. And that's the brain right there. That's what makes this special. Because uh, what you have here is just a pretty typical base valve uh, and then connected to your shaft. Uh, inside here, there's a active piston or a mid valve, and there's really not any need to get in here. Unless this is leaking at this seal right here, there's not really any need to go in here. Uh, if you want to open this up and see what's going on and tune this, this is everything you want to get at. And this is the brain itself. So when you hit a bump, uh, this moves downward. When you hit a bump, So I'm looking at this, what this brass mass right here does is this keeps oil from flowing through some ports. And I'll show you these as we get this apart. Uh, but this is free to move. So as you hit a bump, this has some inertia, hence the name inertia valve. Uh, and so as the cartridge itself is pushed up by the bump, this inertia valve wants to remain at rest or simply moving forward. And so what happens is this cartridge moves up, the valve stays where it is, and it opens up some ports here. And you can't quite see these the way this is shot. Uh, but what that does is then allows oil to flow through the system here. Uh, this shaft wants to move into the damper uh, and this allows oil to flow. So I'll take this apart and show you what is in here and what's worth tuning with this. Okay, so what we have here is the damper itself, and then this is all of the inertia valve, everything that was stuck right here on the end of this valve. So there's a few things that go wrong with these. Uh, one of the simplest things and the issues that people have is this spring right here over time compresses. And what happens is as this inertia valve moves up and down, what happens is the spring wears out and this valve doesn't make it all the way closed to close off these ports. These ports allow oil flow through the cartridge and out around this valve. And so this, this acts just like a lockout. This is no different than a lockout on just about any other fork uh, that you might run into. And the valve is supposed to sit here. What happens is, as time goes on, the spring gets weaker and weaker uh, it, just from having mass sitting on it and from having being compressed. It, it gradually wears just a little bit. And so the valve might only close to this point right here um, rather than having it shut off all the way right at the top here where the valve is covering these ports. So if this doesn't completely cover the ports, you're going to get oil flow through it. But uh, it's a simple fix with these springs. These are supposed to be, I believe the spec is 1.41 inches on them. So you can just measure this with a set of calipers. If it's a little short, you just stretch it back to its original length just a little bit. Easy fix. Uh, then we've got the real issue here, and this is what where people run into problems with these, these cartridges and why they're so divisive amongst people, is if you go through and you ride an uh, Epic, you go to the bike shop, you want to buy one, 
uh, and you want to test ride it for the first time, what do you do? You ride around the parking lot and you feel it nice and locked out. And then you take and you find the first curb you can and you drop off that curb and you just see whether or not this whole thing opens up. And so the way these shocks are actually tuned is to basically go through and pass that test. They don't want the shock to move at all when you're riding around. And then when you hit a bump, like a large or reasonable sized bump, like a curb, the whole thing will compress. What you run into trouble with is in order to make the shock work like that for everybody at every different weight, uh, they have to go through and make this shim stack really heavy. What the shim stack does is controls oil through these ports. Uh, and these ports are basically a bypass of this valve. And so we've got a loaded shim stack here. The more shims you put behind the stack, the more pressure is going to have to build up in this cartridge before you get any blow by through these ports. So by tuning the shim stack, you're able to go through and adjust how much pressure builds up in the cartridge before you get oil flow through this shim stack. And this is something that should be tuned to rider's weight and riding style and really the trails they're on. If you're on something with a lot of tiny little chop roots and baby head rocks, uh, you might want this softer. If you're doing nothing other than standing up and on something like really blue groove, single track, uh, maybe this is something you want harder. A lighter person's obviously going to want a lighter shim stack here too. So if you weigh 100 pounds and you're complaining about your damper cartridge is being too harsh, especially over small chop or square edged hits, this is where you want to start tuning. Uh, but, but there's nothing going on here that's any different from any other fork. So I'm not going to dig into the middle here. Uh, this is just a mid valve. There's nothing fancy about it and there's not really enough shims in there to tune much of anything for. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to show you what's going on inside of a brain cartridge. And that's all for now.